All right, let's get started. So, um, my name is Joey. Uh, so here at One Class, we are, I know with all the school closures and with all the, um, the entire COVID-19 situation, um, a lot of you students are kind of stuck at home and uh, with kind of no access to school. So here at One Class, what we're trying to do is we're gonna provide free uh, daily lessons uh, for specifically uh, in chemistry and in mathematics. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna help you learn at home. So you can kind of tune into the videos. Um, I think they're 10, 12, and 1 p.m. and about, and basically every, every other hour. And what we're gonna do is we are going to try to provide you with kind of lesson material so that you can also learn at home. So that when, when you do go back to school, uh, where uh, you can get, kind of get caught up and still be, um, and or maybe even ahead actually uh, in terms of the entire situation. So again, my name is Joey. I'm going to kind of be your chemistry teacher for the next couple of weeks. Um, and you can tune in uh, to one class to kind of uh, watch my streams and to kind of learn with me as well as we go through kind of this journey. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm currently a teacher candidate at York University. So I am almost just a couple of days away from being a, a official teacher certified by the OCT. Um, my main teachables are, I have chemistry and music as my teachables, so hence why I'm doing uh, in the intermediate senior division. So hence why I'm doing kind of this high school, uh, in high school chemistry here. So uh, just, uh, just so that's kind of a little bit about myself. Um, so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to cover these specific topics. So we're going to cover uh, these specific topics over here. So as you can see, we, uh, this is now SCH4U. So this is grade 12 chemistry. And what we're doing is we are, uh, what we're doing is we have, it's kind of divided into five separate units. So we have here organic chemistry is our first unit. So we're gonna look at functional groups. We're gonna look at reactions, uh, nomenclature. We'll look at <clears throat> kind of how, and how those specific uh, carbon-based compounds play into society. So that's kind of our, first that's our first unit here our second unit is structures and properties of matter so we are talking about the model of the atom and how and how we go from like Bohr rutherford to uh kind of what we know what we know now today as to be the quantum mechanical model uh based off kind of um based off the Schrodinger wave equation. So we're talking about wave particle duality. We'll be talking a lot about uh the quantum mechanical model and how uh electron configuration is uh, how that plays out in a bonding specifically. Unit three, we have energy rate changes and rates of reactions. So we're looking at uh, enthalpy and we're looking at uh, uh, Hess's law and how energy uh, is being converted to either like exothermic reactions. So again, uh, it releases heat or a uh, endothermic reaction where it uh, absorbs heat. So we're talking a lot about that, a lot about energy changes. It's a bit more math based in this case, um, but we will, I'll guide you along with that as well. Unit four is chemical changes, some chemical systems, sorry, and equilibrium. So we're talking about uh, specifically acid base equilibrium. And we'll be also be talking about uh, specific, uh, how, how reactions are both reversible. So the, well, they can go forwards or backwards as well. And then we'll think, we'll think about applying those chemical systems uh, in nature. Our last unit here is electrochemistry. So this is unit five. And we are talking about this concept of redox reactions. So we have an anode and a cathode and how uh, a battery or galvanic cells are created with the loss of electron and the gain of electrons on the specific metals and how that plays out into the industry and in the environment as well. So that's just an over real overview of kind of a grade 12 chemistry. So organic structures, structure and properties of matter, we have energy changes, and then we have chemical systems and equilibrium and electrochemistry. So we have five units and that's how we are going to do things here. So to start off, we're gonna start with organic chemistry. So let me get another marker here. So we have this concept of organic chemistry um, is Organic chemistry is kind of the study of compounds. It says here, compounds in which carbon is the principal atom. So when we talk about carbon, uh, when we talk about organic chemistry itself, it's always about carbon. It's always about, it's always based off a carbon compound. So carbon compounds. 
So if you think about like inorganic inorganic chemistry, for example, so the opposite of organic chemistry, it's kind of it's more so like ionic substances. So without carbon, if you think about in grade eleven, you talked a lot about like sodium chloride, for example, is sodium sodium chloride is an inorganic substance because it does not contain carbon. But we talk we also talk about in grade eleven, we talk about or in grade ten, sorry, we also talk about reactions such as combustion reactions where for example methane is burned so this is ch4 this is methane now this is a carbon-based compound it has the c and this and h's are also a good indicator that it's a carbon-based compound as well so as long as it has carbons and hydrogens uh it's it's going this compound is going to be organic you can think about organic as kind of what you buy at the store oh it's organic it exists only with carbon so that's kind of kind of how that's how i think about things per so per se so again carbon atoms what they do is they form they form four bonds we know that through um our we know that through our charges right if we have i have carbon here it has a charge of uh it can make four different bonds because it has four valence electrons right carbon has four valence electrons Sorry, electrons, which means it. What well, what it can do is it can create four specific bonds, and we'll talk about bonding with carbon more specifically in unit two. But just know that carbon makes four, uh, four four different bonds. So you can view it as, for example, CH four. I'm taking methane as well. C can be bonded to four. Carbon can be bonded to four different things. So this is how we visualize methane. For example, this is methane. So CH4, we have one carbon in the center, and then we have four different carb hydrogen, sorry, that, that hover around carbon or bonded to carbon, single bonded specifically to this carbon atom. So we have this carbon in the middle, and then we have here, we have a hyd one, two, three, four hydrogens. So another way of looking at this is this is called a this is called a structural diagram. And what it is is shows all the carbons and all the hydrogens in that compound so this is a structural i'm gonna put it here a structural diagram so what that is it so it shows carbons and hydrogens and, and it also shows how they're bonded together we're gonna to learn about structural diagrams and we'll look about we'll learn about line diagrams as well and those are a lot more simpler because it as you can as you can probably tell even with this slide here uh organic compounds can become very very big so we try to as organic chemists and as teachers what we try to do is we try to condense them uh to make it as simple as possible so that's just a brief overview of what an organic compound is uh over here uh on my slide here i have these uh, these are specific functional groups so what a functional group is it a particular combination of atoms and molecule are called a functional group. So for example, if I had a, if I had here an alcohol, if you look at, if you look at this one here, I have a carbon bonded to this oxygen and a hydrogen here bonded to an OH group. This is, we call this an alcohol. And we'll talk about functional groups as we go on, but that's just kind of an introduction about that. So these functional groups are important because it alters the chemical properties. It alters how uh, it, organic compounds bond with each other it alters about naming as well and naming is a very very big thing in organic chemistry so uh, again we have functional groups that are like a structural arrangement of atoms so what we can do is we have multiple multiple bonds between carbon atoms so for example in this in this example we had methane but if i had so let's if i had here if I had a carbon double bonded to a carbon. And remember, carbon can make four bonds, right? So again, I have this H here, this H here, one H here, one H here. So th in this case, I have one carbon. I have one carbon here. It's going to be double bonded to another carbon. And because carbon can make two more bonds, it's going to just bond to hydrogen. It's a favorite kind of thing. So in this case, I have two carbons, C2, and I have one, two, three, four, H. Four. In this case, I have a carbon double bonded to a carbon. So this is, a, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to naming um, a bit later in this video, but I'll, I'll show you the name now. This skin is going to be, we're going to name this, this is ethene or ethylene is the common name. So ethene or ethylene. And of course, 
we can also have, so that's another example. And of course we can have carbon and this could be triple bonded to another carbon. So again, carbon still making four bonds. So it loves to make four bonds. Um, but in this case, we have carbon, it's going to triple bond to another carbon and it bonds a hydrogen itself. In this case, we have, this here is a triple bond. Actually, I'll write here. This is a double bond first. Double bond. And this here, what we have here is a triple bond. And, and of course, these are all single bonds, right? So I'll still write that down. These are single bonds. So uh, in, th in this case, if I were to name this, this would be um, ethyne, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about naming more so later in this video, but I'll introduce you to the names now. This is ethyne, and it, so again, carbon always always bonds to four things, but it can have multiple bonds between carbon atoms. So I can have one, two, or even three uh, carbon bonds, or sorry, bonds between carbon atoms. Uh, in here, it says I have single bond between carbon and a more electronegative atom. So for example, remember in grade 11 chemistry, we're talking about this concept of electronegativity. So usually elements on the right hand side of the periodic table, such as like, let's say nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, these are all very, very electronegative. So these are all electronegative. And what a carbon can do is carbon can bond to those uh, specific elements. So for example, I'm going to take this alcohol. So it's carbon bonded to its OH group here. In this case, I have, uh, I have an oxygen here, an OH group. This is actually called a hydroxyl group, but we'll talk about alcohols a bit later. But you see how this carbon here is bonded to a this carb I'm focused here. This carbon bond to the oxygen is bonded to a more electronegative atom. That's also considered a functional group. And in this case, it's called an alcohol. And then uh, carbon can also double bond with oxygen as well. So if I had something like this, If I had something like this, I have this car. I'm more again. I'm focused on this car carbon double bond oxygen. Carbon can also choose to double bond with oxygen as well in this case, and it can. Uh, so again, carbon making four bonds, but it's making your double bond with oxygen here. This here, I have. This is a or actually, if I change this to a R group. So R group just representing like uh, more, it can, I can have more carbons here. This here is actually a aldehyde and we'll, we'll talk about aldehydes more so later on in this video or later on in the course, sorry. So again, all you need to know now is uh, functional groups affect uh, the, the reactions between carbons and, or the, uh, sorry, Depend, functional groups depend depending on what they are affect the chemical properties of organic compounds and that's kind of the takeaway here that I want you to kind of figure out with this first half then we have here a hydrocarbon so we're I'm going to now introduce you to the concept of uh, naming and how to write uh, specific hydrocarbons so hydrocarbons again is just uh, it's just any organic compound that has carbon and hydrogen in its names it could have oxygen, it could have um, other ones, but specifically with hydrocarbons in terms of these three, so alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, they only have carbon and hydrogen in their compound. So let's talk about alkenes first. So alkanes, so alkanes are kind of the simplest ones. So they have a carbon, they have, again, carbons, they all of them have carbons and hydrogens but alkanes only consist of single bonds. So if we have, again, my example before, CH4 here is an alkane, and we named it as methane. So I'm gonna go into a bit of naming now. Um, so ane here represents this ane as well. So if it's a single bond hydrocarbon, it's an alkane. So the ending here is important. So it's A and E is the ending for single bonds, so alkanes. And this meth here, uh, it's a prefix. This meth here means one. And I'll show you a table about how we name things a bit later. Or actually, I can scroll down and give you that as well. 
but that's kind of how we name here. So this is methane, meth, so here, sorry, here, meth, here the prefix is one, eth is two, three is prope, four is bute, and so on, all the way to dec, which is ten. So that's kind of how prefixes go. So if I were to draw the structural diagram of methane, and I've drew this already before, it's just C bought single bonded to hydrogens. And it's always going to be single bonded to hydrogens. Carbons are always single bonded to hydrogens. If, for example, if I had, let's say, I have C2H6, for example, this is ethane. So if I were to draw that, let's draw that. So I have carbon bonded to carbon. Remember, they're only single bonds. So uh, it's not a double bond. So because remember, we, are, we have alkenes here. So this is A and E. So this is a single bond. So, and if I have hydrogens, so I'll just fill out these hydrogens here. Remember, they're always single bonded to the carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six carbons here. And what I have here is, again, I have another alkane. And it's denoted by, again, and how, and how would I name this alkane? If I have two carbons, so I can scroll to my little chart here. Uh, no, no naming. If I were to scroll my, to my little chart, I have two carbons here. So it's F. So I have here one, two. So my prefix is F. And because I told you it's carbons, it's always single bonded to carbons here. This would be ethane. So A and E. And as you can probably tell between the formulas here, there's a specific pattern that it follows. So again, I have CH4. If CH4 was methane and C2H6 is ethane, what we can do is we, act, we have a general formula that states that alkanes are this. So CNH2N plus 2. So this here, this here is a big giveaway for ethanes. So C, I'll write that down. CNH2N plus 2 is our general formula for alkanes. And N here can be anything from like 1 to 10 because we are only focused on the first 10 in grade 12 chemistry. So we have here, if I had, th if N was three, for example, if N equals three, so I have, I would have C three H two times three here is six plus two is eight. So this is C three H eight. And we would name this actually, we would if we want to name it, we, let's go on to naming. This would be propane. So P R O P. A and E. So this would be again A and E first because it's always single bonded, and then we add prop to it. So propane would be my naming for C3H8. And that, that it follows the same kind of general formula for alkanes as well. So that's just a little brief uh, introduction for alkanes. It, these, and I can draw you the, again, I can always draw the structural diagram as well. So let me do that. So C bond, C, bond, C. Again, I have three carbons. They're always bond to each other. And then I can just fill in the hydrogens as single bonds here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three. So just to double check that my formula works, C3H8. So that's propane as my, in, in, a, in a structural diagram. I'm also going to introduce you the concept of a line diagram. So what a line diagram is, so remember, this is a structural diagram. And in a line diagram, what I have here, it's, it's, I, only, I only visualize carbons. I won't, basically, the concept of a line diagram is that I, yeah, I only visualize organic compounds with lines. So this, is, this would be a line diagram. So a line diagram of propane, for example, would look something like this. So just kind of like a little hat, little triangle here. And what that is, is for every point or for every point in this line represents a carbon. So I'm going to break this down real quick. So for example, this here is one carbon. This here is another carbon. And this here is another carbon. So this is three carbons in total. And in a line diagram, we don't show the hydrogens. So this here, this here, ideally I would have, uh, I'll do this in red. Uh, this here I have one, two, three hydrogens. This here has one, two hydrogens, and this here has another three hydrogens. So it's very, very similar to what we did 
here up above. If you compare this line diagram with with this structural diagram here, it's very similar, right? This carbon here is bonded to three hydrogens. This carbon here is bonded to one, two hydrogens, and this bonded here is three hydrogens. But we we choose to use a line diagram because it's much more simple, simpler. So we don't show the hydrogens, but we only show the carbons and how they're bonded. So in this case, this would be propane. So that's kind of the line diagram, and we'll we'll get we'll get more familiar with the line diagram as we move on. But I just want to move on to alkenes and alkynes for now, and we'll come we'll always come back to this. So again, with organic chemistry, a lot of this stuff is cumulative. So if you understand, you we need to under, have a solid understanding of the foundation before you kind of move on to when we when we introduce specific functional groups. Then you then it'll, it'll be a lot easier for you to follow along as well. So this is al this is the concept of alkenes. So alkenes again, alkenes instead they have a carbon double bond, double bonded to another carbon. And we ha I had an example before. I had a uh, ethylene or ethene. Ethene is the IUPAC name. Ethylene is the common name. Uh, and I'll draw that out real quick. So this is carbon double bonded to a carbon and so i have two carbons because remember f is two and if i scroll down to my little chart here this chart's a really really good chart because what what we'll have to do eventually is memorize all these prefixes but we'll we'll, we'll i'll like ease you into it for sure so this is f again and what we're doing is we are uh we are going to label all the hydrogens as well so again this is my structural diagram so because I already have two bonds, so this carbon already has two bonds with this carbon, and we need two more hydrogens to satisfy this equation. So H and H, H and H. So in this case, I have ethene is my, is my, uh, ethene is my I naming of this compound. And as you can see, I have a carbon double bond, a carbon double bond into a carbon. So this is a big giveaway that it's an L. Keen. So A L K E N E. So this is a big way. This E N E gives it away that it is a double bond. So let me highlight that in blue here. If I give you another example, let's do. Um, and this again, I'll, I'll I'll write the I'll write the chemical formula. So this is C two H four. And how do we know that? We actually know the general formula of this is we have one, two carbons, and then we have one, two, three, four hydrogens. And the general formula for alkenes, so this is important as well, I'll write this in red, it's CnH2n. Compared to alkanes, when we had our formula as C, sorry, alkanes, my formula was CnH2n plus two, this is just CnH2n. So we lose that plus two for for an alkene here. So let me do another example. So this would be, uh, let's do an example of butene. So butene, but, so again, E and E, make sure, I know it's an alkene, so I have a carbon double bonded to a carbon. And then I also have but here, if I scroll down here, but here, IUPAC name is butene. Don't worry about the ending, but uh, I have here it's four. Butte is four carbons. So let's do that. So butte is four carbons. So I know it has four carbons. And it's going to have one double bond. One double bonded. It's this is double C double bonded C. So if I were to write a structural diagram, I could have C double bond C, bond C, bond C, because I need four carbons in total. And what I have to do is I have to now write the, write the hydrogens, right? So I have one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here. This carbon's already bonded to three things, one, two, and three. So I only need one hydrogen here, actually. This carbon's bonded to two things, so I need two hydrogens here. And this is bonded to only one thing, so I need three hydrogens here. And if I count this all up, I'm going to have a C4. Again, I have one, two, three, four carbons. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So H, 
H8. So C4H8 here is my but chemical formula for butene. Remember, it has one double bond. So C double bond C here, and the rest is single bonded hydrogen. So this is butene. So again, it follows this formula of C and H2N, where in this case, N equals four. So that's just another example. So you're like, Joey, what if I had multiple double bonds in a compound? And you're like, that's totally fine. You, we could actually represent that. So if I had, and this is just what, another example, if I had, if I, if I took butene again, but what if I had like double bonds, such as if I had two double bonds, actually, before we do that, I'm going to just show you the line diagram for this, for this guy here, because we're going to get more familiar with line diagrams. Because as you can see, structural diagrams are very, very tedious. I don't want to keep drawing at the hydrogens. So the line diagram for butene, sorry. Butene would be one, two, three. So, and then I would have a double bond here. So in this case, remember, so just to recall line diagrams really quickly, I have one, oh, sorry. I don't know why I made a rectangle here. If I have, I have here is I have one, two, three, and four carbons. My first carbon is double bonded to this, and this this two lines here represent a double bond. And so again, it represents my double bonded to this carbon, to the second carbon here. I have third carbon here and fourth carbon here, fourth carbon here. And again, I don't need to draw my hydrogen because that's very, very tedious. The hydrogens are implied that it saturates or it's bonded to, uh, it's bonded to all the sides that carbon can have. Remember, carbon can bond to four different things. So that's all my line diagram of butene. So it's simply just one, two, three, four. So this is butene. So what if I had something like this? Now we're gonna get a little bit more complex. So if I had something like this, and we know that this is butene, what if I added a double bond here? Does that change everything? It really does. And what that is, it changes my chemical formula, it changes how carbons are bonded, and it changes the chemical and physical properties of what this compound is. So let's draw this out, let's draw this out really quickly. So again, I have here, and what I want to do is I'm going to introduce you to how to name specific uh, specific organic compounds. So let's do that. So this is in blue. Again, we have four carbons here. We still have one, two, three, four. So our, our prefix here is still but. And we know it has double bonds, right? We have one, two, we have one double bond here. So this is one double bond, and we have two double bonds here. So what we have here is two double bonds. So we know it, the ending is in. But we but what I what I have to do first is I have to find out what I, I need some way of denoting what kind of uh, what what kind of I need some way of denoting what this is. So, in order for me to do that, I have uh, what I well, how how I have to do that is I have to name my specific carbon. So I'll do this in red. So this is, so if, in order for me to name, I have to name, I have to label these carbons. So I'm going to redraw this actually. It's kind of messy. So my rules for naming is I'm going to have to go, I have to find the longest chain of carbons. So in this case, I have, this is my longest chain. I have one here, two, three, and four. This is the fourth carbon. So in this case, I have carbon one is double bonded, has, contains a carbon double bond, and carbon three contains a double bond as well. So in order for me to name this, I can say this is but because it's, I have four carbons in total, and the ending is in, but I need to be a bit more specific. I don't know where my carbon, my double bond lies. So in this case, I have but, and I have one double bond here, another double bond here, so I can say it's but hyphen, or actually let me erase this. It's gonna be more, 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 uh, more room. I have but, I'm gonna do a hyphen, it's gonna be one, comma three because i have it's and this one comma three is symbolizing the carbons here so the, the carbon double bond so i have one carbon double bond here one carbon double bond here and then i'm gonna have to, have to add a another prefix just to say that i have two double bonds i'm gonna add a di so di and then e and e so it's but one three diene would be my chemical name for this compound 
So just to break it down, again, but represents the entire, the longest chain of carbons. I have one, two, three, four. My prefix is but. One, three represents where my carbon double bonds are. So I have a double bond at carbon one, double bond at carbon three. So this die represents that I have two carbon carbon double bonds. So I have, so it's usually, so with uh, one double bond, I don't need to put die, but with two double bonds in a compound, it's die, and then it would be tri, and so on. So this is a diene here. So I have two double bonds. And the EID, obviously, uh, if we go back to the concept of alkene, it is my ending for the compound. So if I were to draw a structural diagram of this, I can show you how this plays out. So this is carbon, double bonded carbon, single bonded to carbon, and double bonded to my last carbon here. I have a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here. I only have one hydrogen in here because I already have three bonds to this carbon, so I'll need one more hydrogen to saturate this carbon. Same with this one, I'll need one hydrogen because I have one, two, three, four bonds. And then with this one, I have one and two. So in this case, my chemical formula changes because I have four carbons. I have C4, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have H6. So this is but one, three, diene. And we'll, we'll, I'm going to start using more line diagrams, so per se, just because the structural diagrams are a bit more uh, tedious. But I'll try to use both to kind of ease you in as we go towards more complex organic compounds. All right. So my last kind of uh, last kind of hydro, uh, hydrocarbon here is an, al is an alkyne. So let me do that for you. So as you can probably infer, alkynes here are hydrocarbons that contain one at least one carbon triple bond. So alkynes. So carbon triple bonded to carbon. Let's just say C for now. C triple bond C. So, in, for example, I did, I think I did ethyne as my example. So, again, I have here, this is my structural diagram. And, again, I have this triple bond here to note that it is an alkyne. So, if I were to name this, I can say, remember, I have two carbons, so that's my longest chain. So, my prefix for that is ethrate. If I scroll down here, this here is eth for two. So I have F and then what, because I have a triple bond, it's going to end in I N E. So it always ends. It ends with this prefix here. So it's F fine would be my chemical name. And then my chemical formula would be, if I were to count this out, this is one, two carbons. I have two carbons and one, two hydrogen. So it's C two H two. Now, again, I can do it. Again, I'm going to do another example. So, what if I had something like C, triple bonded C, bond C, bond C, bond C, for example. And this is bonded to one hydrogen. This would be not bonded to anything because I already have four carbon bond. I have of carbons already making four bonds. This would be bonded to two hydrogens. This one as well. And this one would be three hydrogens just to saturate all of those make sure that carbons are always bonded to four things so in this case let's let's work this out so let's take our long chain we have a long chain of carbons right so remember i have one here two three four and five carbons so i have five specific carbons here so that's my longest chain so if i were to go scroll to my chart with five carbons i would have one, two, three, four, five. So this prefix here is pent. So I have pent as my prefix. And then because I know I have a triple bond, I'll do this in red. I have a triple bond in my first carbon here. It's going to be pent ion. Or you can say it's pent one ion just to denote that where my triple bond is. That's a lot more specific and I actually like pent one iron more than pentine but this it infers that this is the the first carbon is triple bonded it has contains a triple bond here so again i can i, I can apply these same rules actually let me do the let me do the uh, line diagram first so the line diagram for this one for this structure would be uh, i would have a triple bond first 
So it's one, two, three, four, and five. This would be the line diagram for pentine, and I'll show you why that is. Again, my carbon one and two, this is carbon one, carbon two, contains that triple bond. This is carbon three, carbon four, carbon five. So this is, again, and this is, and I'll, I'll do my chemical form now. This is one, two, three, four, five. I have five carbons, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight hydrogens. So as you can tell, we, get, we have a general formula for alkynes as well. Alkynes here as this formula, CNH. 2n. So general formula. And remember, this is for one triple bond. For alkynes, I have C N H 2n minus 2. So this satisfies you, right? So if I plugged in the 5 here, C5, H here would be 2 times 5 is 10, minus 2 is H. So we can verify that this is indeed an alkyne. So uh, we, we talked about, about alkanes, alkynes, alkenes, and alkynes. So alkanes, to recall, have a single bond. Alkenes have a double bond, and alkynes have a triple bond. So again, these are also when we talk about alkanes, they're saturated hydrocarbons, which means this carbon. Let me go back to uh, alkanes here. This carbon is always bonded to four things, so it's all it's saturated by the carbons, whereas uh, alkenes and alkynes, they have a double bond, they are unsaturated. Because what I can do, and we'll go over reactions of organic compounds, is that we can actually add hydrogen to this bond and break this double bond to make it all uh, single bonds. And we'll talk about more of that. So that's hence why it's unsaturated. Same with alkynes. With alkynes, we can do this twice. We can break this triple bond and actually make it back to a double bond. We can break this triple bond and make it back to a single bond by adding hydrogens into it. So hence why this is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So I'm going to write this in blue. So these are all unsaturated because, and we'll talk about bond energies more in unit three, but this is more so we can actually uh, add hydrogen to this and it's going to, uh, it's going to release energy into the environment. So that's alkenes, al Alkanes and alkynes, sorry, alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. It's kind of tricky with the pronunciation. And then we're going to look at the last hydrocarbons. We're going to look at cyclic hydrocarbons. So cyclic hydrocarbons are a special kind of type of hydrocarbons, and they're bonded in a, in a circular, in a closed ring structure. So for example, if I had, and they, I'll, I'll show you the general formula is CNH2N, right? As denoted here, CNH2N. So, for example, if I had something, if I drew a line diagram of this triangle here, what can we know? What do we know about this triangle? It might look like an ordinary triangle in any other case, in like geometry or whatnot, but in organic chemistry, it's different. So, in organic chemistry, because we know that this point is a carbon, this point is a carbon, and this point is a carbon, we can actually draw the structural diagram for you. So, I have C bonded C bonded C. And these are, this is also bonded as well because they're all bonded in a cyclic, in a circular fashion. So if I were to fill the hydrogens, again, I have, I have this carbon bonded to two different things. I have, so this would be bonded to two hydrogens. This here is the same thing, bonded to two hydrogens. This carbon is also bonded to two hydrogens here just to saturate my hydrocarbon here. And these are, these are, this could be saturated or unsaturated, depending on if we have, a, we could have a double bond in a cyclic hydrocarbon, but that's a little bit more complex. So again, the English rules still apply. So we do, we find the longest chain. In this case, it's, in this case, it's, this is just circle, circular fashion. This is one, two, and three. So again, my, in my prefix, I will have prop. You can refer back to the chart. This is prop. And again, these are all single bonded, right? So this is propane. However, if we were to, we need to be able, because we know propane is actually this, right? We need to figure out a way to add, uh, to figure out what, to denote how this is a cyclic hydrocarbon. So in order to do that, we actually add cyclo in front of our name. So this is, this here is cyclopropane. Sorry, where is this? Yeah, this here is cyclopropane. I'll do one more example. And again, this is C3, 
H6. I have three carbons and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six hydrogens. So it follows my general formula of CnH2n, where n in this case is three. So I'll do one more example with a cyclic hydrocarbon. So what if I had, I'll give, I'll, let's do the chemical formula for it. So what if C6H12? What can I do? How do I, how do I figure out how to, how do you draw this specific compound? So if I have six high, six carbons in my, in my ring, or we, we're going to assume this is also a ring as well. So this is in, this is a cyclic hydrocarbon. Let's think of a shape that has six shape, six sides to it. So in this case, we'll have a hexagon. A hexagon has six sides, right? So let's draw a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in this case, this is actually my chemical or my line diagram for, uh, this would be for, uh, for C6H12, right? I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six carbons. So again, six carbons, and I don't have to represent my hydrogens here because they're implied that I have two, it's bonded to two hydrogens per carbon. And how do we name this, right? So first we can say six carbons. Let's go to our chart because we haven't done six yet, actually. So six here would be, so if this is one, two, three, four, five, six, C6 is the prefix hex. So we're going to use that. So this is hex and they're all single bonded to each other so this is hexane and then because it's in a cyclo form this would be cyclo in cyclic form this would be cyclohexane so that's how we name this compound here and i'll draw the structural diagram for you just so i can just to show you what i mean but this is a bit tedious as you can see i have one two three four five six there we go and then again these are, this is bonded to hydrogen Hydrogen here, hydrogen, hydrogen. If we count all of this up, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have C six, H twelve as you can see for cyclopropane. As you can see, this gets very, very, very complex and we like to stick with just, this is much, so a line diagram is much simpler than writing all this out. So we'll probably go towards line diagrams more so uh, in the future. So that's kind of a brief overview of hydrocarbons. We just learned about alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and cyclic hydrocarbons. So we're going to now talk about this topic of isomerization, isomerism. So, or isomers. So this, I'm going to do this in black, sorry. So this is the topic of isomerization, or isomerism, or isomers. Isomers. So what are isomers? Isomers are, if you read here, compounds with the same chemical formula, but different molecular arrangements and properties. They're called isomers. So there's three types of isomers. We have structural isomers, and I'll break this down for you. We have structural isomers so they have the same chemical formula but different connectivity of their carbon backbone and how and how do i prove that so let me show you a, an example of uh structural isomer so i'm going to do all a line diagram so i have here what would this be i have one two three carbons or actually let me draw the other one first uh Actually, let me draw, let me draw, let me, I'm going to draw this and then I'm going to draw this. Sorry, that line's really weird. Yeah, I'll draw that. So let's look at, let's analyze these two compounds. So again, we have one, two, three, four carbons and one, two, three, four carbons. So they both have four carbons. So we know it's butte. They both also have one double bond in it. So we actually know that this is, and we can name this, right? This is butte. Uh, this is but one in because my uh one two three and four and this is one two three and four but this double bond relies on two right so this is but two in if i were to name this 
So how are they different? So they're different because the carbon, the double bond lies in different, uh, in a different place. They both also share the same chemical formula. This is still CH, C, C4, sorry, H, this would be H6, I believe. So we have, let's see, let's check alkene or C2H, oh, sorry, 2N, sorry. So this is actually an eight here, my bad. So C4H8, and this is also C4H8, right? So they both have the same chemical formulas. So again, same chemical formulas, but different connectivity of the carbon-carbon backbone. So if I have here, it's again, my carbon here is a double bonded to carbon one. My double bond lies on carbon one here, and my double bond lies on carbon two in this case. So they have a different connectivity, which means they're actually different chemical uh, chemical compounds as denoted by my name here. Butuene and butuene are different chemical compounds. However, they share the same chemical formula C4H8. So that's a, that, so this is the concept of a structural isomer. So that's one. Uh, another one would be, another type of isomer is geometric isomers. So let's do so this is a geometric isomer. So geometric isomers in grade 12, we're going to only talk about two. So the same chemical formula, but different arrangement about the double bond. So if I were to draw, and again, I'm going to use butuene here as an example again. Actually, I'll use butuene. I have this, and then I have this compound here. So if I have, I have these two compounds. Again, these are actually, these are both, if I were to name them, again, this is one, two, three, four. So one, sorry, one, two, three, four. Remember, I'm my, my carbon naming rules are, I always name the longest chain. And we'll talk more about naming as we kind of go through the slide, but this is just kind of a preview. So this one, two, three, four. Sorry, this shouldn't exist here. Because I want both of them to be four carbons. One, two, three, and four. So again, these two compounds are exactly the same. So they are exactly the same in terms of chemical formula. Again, it's C4H8, we know that already. They're actually the same in terms of naming as well. Because if I do, again, this carbon lies on, this the carbon double bond lies on carbon two here. So I have butuene for both of them. Butuene, this is also butuene. However, the only difference between this is how it's bonded, right? Do you see how this, uh, it's how it's bonded about the double bond. There's a different arrangement. I'm going to show you in red. So in this case, if I, I have this carbon here, this carbon here, this double bond, it, this is called a trans isomer. So this is trans, meaning that it is on the opposite side. So this carbon double bond here, if you look, if you look at how it's shaped, it's shaped like a Z or kind of like a zigzag, like one, two, and three. And this here is, this here is double bond, and I'll draw this in blue. This here is, this here is double bond here uh, between carbon two and three. So because one and four are on opposite uh, sides of each other, so this one is on the bottom side, you can see how it's on the bottom side here, and one's on the top side, this would be a trans isomer. So this, if I were to name this, this is actually, and all I have to do is I have to put trans but two in. That would be my full name for this compound here. However, for this compound, uh, if I look at carbon two, it has a double bond. One and four are on the same side. Look, I, it's all, all, they're both on the bottom side. In this case, I have a cis isomer. So this is, would be cis but two in. So this is the concept of cis and trans, trans isomers. So, just a little give you a give you for a formal definition of cis and trans. So cis would be on the same side, same side of double bond. So in this case, remember all 
basically this could be this this one could be uh this could be our group so this could be bonded to other carbons but they're on the same side they're on the same bottom side of this car uh double bond so we call it a cis isomer whereas in this case this is here is a trans isomer it is the opposite side opposite side of double bond so this is the opposite side. So again, one's at the top here, four, carbon four is at the top, and one's at the bottom. So this is a trans isomer. So this is the concept of cis and trans. So this is a geometric, they're both geometric isomers here. And lastly, we have stereo isomers, and this is, this is where it gets fun. Stereo isomers. So it has the same chemical formula, but different arrangement around a carbon atom so let me take the easiest one I ha what i have here is a carbon so this here is says states sorry this here states that a chiral carbon has four bonds with four with different groups attached on each so if i had something like this so if i had a carbon attached to a hydrogen attached to another carbon attached to a fluorine and attached to a chlorine this here is a chiral molecule. And what that means is it just means carbons bonded to four different things. Chiral carbon center. So this 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 the the C here is a chiral carbon. And what that is is I can have because carbon carbons bond to four things is actually in three dimensions. So there's actually an X, a Y, and a Z axis when we talk about these things. I only draw it in two dimensions because we can only see it in two dimensions, but the the carbons actually bonded into uh, into a tetrahedral shape. And we'll talk about how it's bonded uh, in, in three dimensions later on. But what chemists or what, what, how we denote that is we, because we can't visualize uh, because we don't, we're only given paper, we're only given a two-dimensional plane, what we can do is we can actually, we use specific symbols to modify, to make this, uh, to, to kind of see how it's in three dimensions. So, uh, because, so I'm going to replace these lines with, uh, with kind of dashes and wedges. And this would be SCL. So in this case, I have, again, I have a chiral carbon here. So it's again bonded to four different things. This dashed line here represents that it's going uh, out of the, it's going um, into the plane. So this is going into the plane. And this uh, wedged here, this wedge here represents that it's, it's sticking out of the plane. So if I were to Google, um, I would just, I'm just gonna Google a tetrahedral tetrahedral bond angle for you and we can see and you can see how it works so uh let's see if i look at this shape here this is going into the plane and this is sticking out of the plane where and these two carbons are in the plane so i have here these two th this carbon this carbon and this hydrogen are in in the plane of the paper, so in, in two dimensions, whereas this fluorine is going into, is going into the plane, so it's in the Z, it's going, uh, like it's sticking into the inside of the paper, and then the uh, the chlorine here is sticking towards me, it's sticking out of the plane. So that's how we would visualize these things in three dimensions. And what, what we can do is, with this, with this example, I could do uh, different, I could do a different molecule, right? What if I had something like this? So what if, I, what if I have this molecule compared to this? So again, these are both the same compound because it has one carbon, one carbon, or sorry, two carbons, has two hydrogen, uh, has one hydrogen each, two carbons each, one chlorine each, and one fluorine each. However, they're bonded differently. And in three dimensions, they're actually different compounds just because uh, in, in molecule, I'm gonna call this molecule one and this molecule two. Do this in different color. This will be the last thing we go over today. Uh, molecule one here has my fluorine going into the plane and my chlorine out of the plane, whereas molecule two, I have chlorine into the plane and fluorine out of the plane. So these two, these these two halogens here, have swapped places. So these are actually this is this is a different 
this is a different uh, different chemical compound. Same chemical formula, but different arrangement around the carbon atom. And we can denote this this are, we can denote this as a stereoisomer. And we we have we have conventions that, such as plus and minus and D and L that you learn about in kind of universe in university level chemistry. But it's just how we label specific chiral compounds, and there's a, there's a rules about that as well. So that's kind of all for today. I'm just going to do a little recap of what I did today with you as well. Scroll all the way back up. So what we did today was we went over. We had a we had we we went through kind of hydrocarbons or the, to the topic about organic chemistry so how we have organic chemistry is only made up of carbon compounds we have uh and the difference between organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry so inorganic has uh, no carbons in their chemical formula whereas organic compounds do and carbon is really really special because just because it can make four different bonds so you can picture and carbon can bond with it itself so it makes for a variety of organic compounds we learned about the difference between a structural diagram and a line diagram so again this is a structural diagram where it shows carbon and hydrogens whereas um let me find a line diagram a line diagram for example only shows you the carbons here it does not show you the hydrogen then it's just a line diagram it's just a bit simpler in terms of visualizing big organic compounds what, I, what we also did was I introduced you to the concept of, <clears throat> sorry, uh, functional groups. So how it can be bonded to, <clears throat> sorry, different, different things. So I can have multiple bonds in the carbon. So carbon double bond, carbon triple bond. <clears throat> I could have car a single bond with carbon and a more electronegative <clears throat> uh, atom. So I could have an alcohol here bond to a, a so this would be an alcohol because carbon bonded to an oxygen is different. And I could have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, so something like an aldehyde. And we'll talk about more functional groups later on. <clears throat> we talked about the differences between alkane, alkenes, and alkynes, where alkanes are single bonded uh, carbons, carbon carbon compounds. Uh, alkenes are carbon double bonded to a carbon, so we have a double bond here. And we went through alkynes, where alkynes have a triple bond bonded to a carbon as well. And lastly, we went over, uh, sorry, we went over cyclic hydrocarbons briefly as well, where we have <clears throat> carbons are bonded in a closed ring structure. And then we went over isomers as well. So isomers, in this case, we have three different isomers. We have structural isomers. So the uh, same chemical compound, but different connectivity. So again, I have, in this case, this carbon uh, double bond is on carbon one, whereas this is a carbon two. That's a structural isomer. A geometric isomer will be cis, a example of cis and trans, so how uh, how other car carbons are bonded, how how carbons are bonded uh, on different sides of, could be a different side or a same side of a double bond. So again, cis, we have the same side, so in this case it's a cis butene, that's a Z, but it's actually a two, sorry about that. And a trans would be on opposite side, so this is on the bottom side and this would be on the top side, so this would be a trans butene. And we have stereoisomers. Last week we talked about stereoisomers. So we talked about how the carbon is a chiral carbon, so it's bonded to four different uh, things or four different elements or functional groups. And we talked about briefly about the three-dimensional shape that a carbon takes in space. So how this carbon hydro this hydrogen is in the plane, and this fluorine here is into the plane. So it's going um, it's going into the plane. And this wedge here represents out of the plane, so it's coming towards you. And so th this fluorine is going away from you, and this chlorine is going towards you. And how stereoisomers exist, because if I switch kind of these elements together, then I get a different geometric shape in, um, in how it's organized. In the organizations of in 3D space, it's a different chemical compound. So... Thank you for watching. We're going to talk about in um, the in next week's episode. We're going to talk about how or lesson. Sorry, not episode. I think it's a TV show. Maybe uh, we're going to talk about uh, types of carbons in molecules. We're going to talk about phys some physical properties, and we're going to get to naming and branched alkenes as well. So we're going to build our library of organic compounds. So thank you for watching.